Hi, everybody. I am Michelle Clark. I'm a handbook editor at Bedford St. Martin's, and I work with Andrea Lunsford to develop course materials that make life a little easier for college writers and for teachers of writing. So welcome to this narrated slideshow uh, through which I will share a few best practices for integrating Easy Writer into your classroom teaching. So after, please feel free to pass this recording along to other colleagues who assigned the book. One of the first things we generally introduce students to in college writing courses is the idea of the rhetorical situation, the entire context in which any communication takes place. Now, Andrea Lunsford is a rhetorician, one of the foremost in the country, and her work, including this book, is grounded in rhetorical thinking. It might be fun to have students start off the semester by writing a reflection about error or correctness or rules about writing, and I'm doing air quotes around rules. Students certainly will have thought about these topics from high school or other experiences with writing. Have them then reflect on this statement from Easy Writer that's on your screen. Differing opinions about error and correctness don't mean that there's no such thing as correctness in writing, only that correctness always depends on some context, on whether the choices you make seem appropriate to your audience, your purpose, and your topic. And then these reflections that students write can provide you with a low stakes diagnostic for the beginning of the semester, or maybe just an opportunity for a good class discussion. Let me break this presentation into two parts. To start, let's take a brief walk through uh, the new edition of Easy Writer, Easy Writer 7th edition, and then I can share some more ideas for teaching with it. So first, there's a focus on making choices, which I've already mentioned, and the idea is emphasized right from the very first chapter. If you happen to be teaching with the exercises version of Easy Writer, the prompts in chapter one can help students think through ideas about making choices as a writer. Second, know that the handbook supports students as they write in traditional genres and in multimodal genres. So coverage of writing argument, for example, sits side by side with coverage of composing presentations and websites and posters and other projects. So you're going to want to see chapters 7 through 10 for this. Also, since I know your students come to your classroom from really different life experiences and a wide variety of backgrounds, it's useful to see that the handbook offers advice for communicating across cultures and across communities, both respectfully and intelligently. So Andrea's signature style discussions, and these are chapters 20, uh, 19, I'm sorry, through 22, help students interrogate their own assumptions about their audience, about their own use of language and about their own thinking about what's normal. Now it's likely you assign students to read and write with sources. In chapter seven on reading and listening and in chapter 12 on evaluating sources, Andrea has added advice on fact checking texts. This is helpful for students who may be easily overwhelmed by what they find online and may have too little experience in assessing texts critically. She gives practical advice, including uh, notes about visiting nonpartisan websites to check facts. And Andrea Lunsford's hallmark top 20 section is based on research with thousands of pieces of first year writing and gives useful tips that students uh, can use to edit their own writing. And if you have the exercises version of the book or if you use Launchpad Solo, you have plenty of practice exercise that reinforce editing skills. You'll notice in the book that there are references to Launchpad activities at the beginning of each chapter. I'm showing uh, chapter 36 here, and you can see that reference at the bottom of the page. Finally, the you have two um, you have the beginning and the end of the book. So the back cover flap, which I'm sorry I don't have a picture of here, the back cover flap includes a handy list of Launchpad Solo resources that you can assign before class to prep students, um, after class as a review, or during class as a group activity. Um, you might already use the learning curve activities. I personally like to do one or two learning activities as a whole class. Um, so that's the back cover. The front cover spread, which you can see here on your screen, includes something that's new to this edition of Easy Writer, something I'm really excited about. 
A quick start menu, which is what you can see here, shows you all of the advice and models that are going to support the different kinds of assignments that you give. So here I'll transition uh, to the second part of my presentation. So the first part was just a walk through the book. Now the second part is ideas for teaching with Easy Writer. And I'll actually come back to the quick start menu in just a moment. I want to organize this part of the presentation with these five tips. Require the handbook, plan with the handbook, introduce and use the handbook in class, and respond to drafts with the handbook. So following these tips will help students see the value and the resource that they've purchased, and they'll also help make your teaching life a little bit easier. So idea number one is to require students to have the handbook with them every day in class. Give them maybe a participation grade for having the book by the second week of class, that's what I have done. Uh, commit yourself to making some assignments and some activities dependent upon having the book in hand, even if you're teaching online. The more you rely on the book in your teaching, the more students will rely on it as a resource to answer their questions about writing when you're not available. Idea number two is to plan with the handbook. This brings up the quick start menu again. Take a look at the variety of assignments supported by Easy Writer and its launchpad. When I talk to teachers around the country, I find that most assign an argument, a rhetorical analysis, which is highlighted here, and some kind of research in Comp 1. You can see here which sections in the handbook offer advice and models for those kinds of assignments. Now, Andrea also has you covered if you assign your st students to write blogs or other multimodal projects or reflective essays. When you create an assignment sheet or an assignment prompt, consider including all of the handbook sections that will help uh, students complete that particular assignment. You can see here on your screen that I'm looking at the quick start menu on the left because I'm assuming that I'm assigning a rhetorical analysis. That's what's highlighted. And on the right, you can see the first part of an assignment sheet. And I've worked references to the book into my instruction for students. They'll scramble less and they'll have a bit more confidence if they see some help right off the bat. All right, idea number three introduce the handbook. I would suggest taking class time for this, 20 to 30 minutes. Give students some practice in navigating the book, finding content that you think is most helpful, and using aids, um, navigation aids like the index in the back and the brief contents up front. You can have students work together on a scavenger hunt. I've tried this in the past. Um, and write to me if you want an example. My email is right there on the screen. A scavenger hunt may ask questions like, where in the book am I going to find a sample argument paper? Where will I find a model for citing a YouTube video in MLA style or a TED talk? Where will I find advice about putting source material in my own words? And where will I find rules on using commas? If you're teaching online, you can post a scavenger hunt as a Google Doc and maybe assign students in pairs to complete the hunt. You might also have students go really personal on this. Maybe have them reflect on two of their you know, personal writing challenges and then look for advice in the book to help with at least one of them. So introducing the handbook as a resource way before something is due is really what's critical. Idea number four, use the handbook in class. Okay, so first of all, if you're teaching online, definitely have the class read chapter six, called learning from, low learning from Low Stakes Writing. This is going to prepare students for the kinds of writing that will show that they are engaged in your online class. You might have them participate by writing occasional posts or quick writes about course topics or the readings. And there's a nice checklist at the end of this chapter with advice about this kind of virtual participation. Um, so I really like chapter six. Here are some other tips for using the handbook actively in class. Um, tip for using in class, study the sample essays. If you're discussing introductions or conclusions or another specific topic, look at the essay in 7E or the essay in 8G 
and talk as a group about the strengths and weaknesses in these samples. Maybe what's going on in the, the introduction um, of the rhetorical analysis that you see here, or what's going on in the conclusion of the argument essay. So students appreciate having a sample of what to do or what not to do when they draft. Another tip, assign reading. I do actually assign students to read small sections in the handbook, but then, and here's the key, ask them to write about the most useful piece of advice in that section and say why. Or maybe what's the most useful example in this section of the book and also say why. So if you're teaching online, you can have students post a response. Another tip, use the checklists. If you and students are discussing a reading, for example, assign students to use the analyzing text checklist. Uh, you're seeing it here, it's in section 7D. Have them put that checklist side by side with something that they're reading. The checklist offers a dozen questions to ask about the reading, and maybe you can ask students to answer perhaps four or five or six of the questions about the particular reading that you've assigned. Another tip, assign the exercises. Easy Writer includes exercises for reading, writing, grammar, and research. Either as an in-class activity, an online activity, or homework, ask students to complete one or more exercises, and there are a lot to choose from in the version of the book with exercises. Last tip, view some launchpad videos together. There are tons of videos in the Easy Writer Launchpad. Videos about the composing process, about argument, about research. And these can act as, a, as discussion starters for a class or maybe as a prompt to start a reflection. Um, so those are a few really practical ways in which the handbook acts as a learning tool as your students draft and as they revise. And we're back to this. So finally, my idea number five is to respond with the handbook. I know that your most labor intensive activity is reading and responding to student writers and student writing. And of course you'll write comments specifically related to your assignment or a memorable, a memorable class discussion or to a specific student's um, risk taking with an idea or topic. So you do a lot of teaching and coaching in the margins. But when it's possible, Refer students to the handbook so that you don't have to teach handbook lessons in the margins. Here's what I mean. I seem to always be referring students to 34C because vague pronouns are a pet peeve with me. I think they really get in the way of clear academic writing. Use the codes to direct students to advice and examples to solve problems. So in the margin, I might write, or even if I'm doing, you know, Google Docs responding or responding with Word comments, I would put 34C right in the margins and my students know to go there. Um, when students peer edit, you can have them do the same thing for peers drafts. Referring to the handbook is a time saver because Andrea's explanations are clear and they're often accompanied, as you can see here, by a useful example or a couple of them. Um, this also teaches students to be resourceful and self-reliant, so those are good academic habits. I'm so glad that you're using Easy Writer, and I wanna thank you for spending this time viewing the presentation. If you have any questions about the book or about Launchpad resources, please contact me. My information is there, Emily is your rep, and her information is there as well. I work with Andrea Lunsford directly, and I've been a Launchpad user for three years. So I hope these tips have been helpful. Um, again, if you wanna talk about anything else, you can contact me and I will get back to you right away. So I wanna close by saying happy teaching and stay healthy, please and let us know how else Bedford St. Martins can help you.